I haven't heard much about Windows on the Steam Deck since the console released originally nearly two years ago. And while this isn't the first time that I've actually tried to venture into Windows on the Steam Deck, today I'm actually going to be going through and examining the feasibility of Windows on the Steam Deck in 2024. Now before we get into the actual review or install of Windows, you need a dock or some way to attach a keyboard and mouse to your Steam Deck because Windows is not very handheld friendly up until the point where we get all the software installed and configured, but you are going to absolutely need a mouse and a keyboard and a USB drive to get everything set up. And while later on in the video I'll be talking more about dual booting SteamOS and Windows on the Steam Deck, I will say that you should not put Windows on an SD card because they have a maximum number of reads and writes that they can handle and over time they will eventually just wear out to nothing. They're really not made for a Windows operating system that's constantly doing something in the background, taking and swapping bits around. And while I will have an SD card guide in the near future, even the best of the best when it comes to SD cards will be nothing in comparison to the main drive, even bad main drives. So you should partition your main drive to have at least 64 gigabytes available for Windows if you want to dual boot. And when it comes to what version of Windows you should install, it's not really a competition. Windows 11 is really the only choice here because Windows 10 doesn't have the amount of features for handhelds and touchscreens like Windows 11 does. But if you want to go one step further like I did, I made a custom version of Windows 11 with a tool called NT Lite, and I completely gutted it of its regular functionality and just made it usable for gaming. Now if you want to see a video about this where I'll go into greater detail and show you how you can do this for yourself, just let me know in the comments down below because I'd be more than happy to do a guide for it, but there are some guides on the internet for now to get yourself started. And while I'm not going to get too deep into the installation, it's relatively simple. All you need to do is have an OS that you want to install on a bootable USB, plug it into your Steam Deck, select the partition that you laid out earlier, and boom, it's pretty much over. But there is one major problem. You see, after installing Windows, I came to the realization that I could no longer boot into SteamOS. Now my first thought was that I had overwritten the SteamOS partition, which is ironically what happened the first time that I tried to get into installing Windows on the Steam Deck. But upon further review, Windows had stripped the UEFI boot entry of SteamOS. And all I had to do was boot back into SteamOS from the option launch from file. And I followed a little guide I found on Reddit that I'll have linked down below that follows a simple command to add it back to the UEFI entry. But do be warned that this situation could happen multiple times because SteamOS and Windows S do not play well with other operating systems on the same drive. And as a side note, there is a really cool program called Clover that you can actually have a graphical interface of which operating system you want to boot into every time you open the Steam Deck. I'll have a link to the guide and the program down in the description. Now after jumping through a couple hoops to actually get Windows installed, we are very far from being able to use it in handheld mode or really far from actually doing any serious gaming on it. The operating system itself is actually really good. Maybe it's because I went through that whole process of making a custom debloated OS but overall, there was really no stuttering or lagging or anything. Everything was really smooth, and apps opened fast, animations were quick, and everything seemed about right. In order to get Windows in a playable state, however, you have to go online to Valve's site and download all of their official drivers. But the problem is, because Valve doesn't really support Windows, they just added the driver so you could install Windows, those drivers are all out of date, and they all suck. But thankfully, the community has us covered on this front, at least partially. First of all, there's these custom Amerinime drivers for the Steam Deck, that actually improve performance overall and fix broken games that didn't launch before. Of course, I'll have a guide link down in the description. It is kind of out of date and it's kind of complicated, so it might take you a little while, but it's absolutely worth it. And speaking of things that suck out of the box, the Wi-Fi is absolutely terrible. And while that wouldn't be so bad if the ethernet would at least work, in my case, about five minutes after plugging in my ethernet adapter, for some reason or another, it just completely refuses to work anymore and it loses all internet connection. But that being said, the Wi-Fi just in general is terrible. The connection is horrible, the download speed is horrible, the ping is horrible, it's all horrible. But thankfully, there is another community fix. And it's by the same guy who made the Clover bootloader that I was just talking about earlier. It's a custom unlocked Wi-Fi driver that basically tripled my performance in one go. I went from one or two megabytes per second, maybe, to about eight or nine at peak. And while I do have a really bad network, it actually improved performance for me either way, so it really doesn't matter. I'll have the GitHub page linked down in the description. It's really not hard to follow at all, it has a little guide, and it's pretty self-explanatory, so you should be able to do it in no time at all. Now there's still one more essential program to download, and this is what actually makes the Steam Deck usable in handheld mode. It's called Handheld Companion, and it brings back a lot of the features that you have in SteamOS into Windows without using the weird and clunky Steam overlay. Now while it does have options about TDP and refresh rate, those things I haven't really looked into myself very much, but it does have options to control the desktop in many different ways with desktop layouts, you can set up personal hotkeys for things like Alt Tab and Windows button on all the different control keys, and it allows just generally for you to be able to really easily use the Steam Deck in handheld mode and fix just about any problem you'll have. There are a couple situations where it gets a little spotty, 
I think I'd be perfectly comfortable with taking this on a, you know, a day long trip. I'll be able to do just about anything I normally would and there should be no unfixable problems. There's also another small registry tweak you might wanna do and I'll leave it down in the description, but it basically improves the performance and the responsiveness of the touchscreen. And it's something that I highly recommend because I didn't actually experience the touchscreen before it was bad, but from what I can tell, it actually works really good now. And after all of that setup, we finally get into the gaming. And for the most part, it's kind of a disappointment. One big draw of installing Windows though is I can play games like Call of Duty, which of course I wouldn't play competitively. I'm talking about having Cold War or Modern Warfare 3 for the zombies mode, of course. But no matter what I did, I could not get Warzone to work on the Steam Deck. Now GTA 5 setup and play went a lot better. What I will say about Windows is it handles the launcher system a lot better because if you know anything about SteamOS, it doesn't really play well with launchers too much. But there were no problems with Windows, with the Rockstar launcher or anything like that. And the game was certainly playable, especially in story mode. When it came to doing tests for benchmarks, it lost across the board by about 10 FPS on average. I'm really not even sure why that's the case, especially because I have the supposedly better drivers, which I'm starting to think might be causing some trouble, which I didn't test it out. But yeah, I'm really not sure how it lost in performance so bad, considering the fact that Linux is literally running a compatibility layer in order to play the game. The only thing I can think of is just pure optimization and the fact that Linux might be just stripped down even further for gaming. I also downloaded Rust on this thing just to see what would happen, and I knew I was gonna have to play it with a mouse and a keyboard since it was not made for controller. And I downloaded it and I set it all up and I waited forever and ever and ever to load and it never did. Every single time it just crashed, just completely with absolutely no warning at all. As soon as I was about to load into the world, it crashed. I'm starting to think that the drivers might have something to do with it. I really do not know, but as of now, I don't know what potential solutions there are. Now, Minecraft Bedrock ran pretty flawlessly, but that's really no surprise. First of all, it's running on Windows, and second of all, it's Minecraft Bedrock. It can run on a potato. Yeah, there is alternatives that allow you to play Minecraft Bedrock on SteamOS, and I think that those are gonna be better suited to my overall goals, but it always is an option if you wanna download Windows. After doing a little bit of further testing, a couple things happened. So on Windows, I did get Call of Duty to run uh, because it's Modern Warfare 3 free weekend, and I was able to play that just fine. It had some FPS dips here and there. It didn't run at a stable 60, but that was because of the CPU limitation. But with low settings, with competitive settings, I was getting, you know, anywhere from 60 to 45 FPS, basically consistently. And I think the Steam Deck experience would be better than something you would see on a PlayStation 4, because it has an SSD, it has modern hardware, and you can adjust all the settings to your liking. So, in my personal opinion, it's really playable. And I think if you go back to like Modern Warfare 2019, you could play them just fine, multiplayer or anything at 60 FPS, much less zombies. Uh, so you know how, um, this game now that being said, a couple revelations did happen that weren't so good. Fallout 4 at the same settings on Windows and on SteamOS were not even comparable. I set them both to a medium preset quality with motion blur disabled. And on Windows, it never even touched 60 FPS, much less stabilized. But on SteamOS, it dropped maybe one or two frames here or there, which of course medium is still a little higher than what I would run. I would run some more optimized settings for my own personal use case like I normally do. But just to standardize things, Windows ran about 10 FPS lower in all situations. Also, the more that I played around, the more that I realized handheld companion and the apps that I'm using to make Windows handheld friendly are kind of glitchy and don't really work properly. And sometimes apps just exit wrong things don't work, your keybinds don't work, and you're stuck full screen in an app, which you can get out by using a four finger swipe down, which is weird. But in my opinion, still, every single experience I've had on Windows so far is just really not that good. Although I will say that driver that unlocked the Wi-Fi is working because SteamOS, where I'm sitting right now, doesn't even have a Wi-Fi connection and my Windows is all the way max, which is amazing. So. Is it worth it to download Windows on the Steam Deck in 2024? Honestly, I think it depends entirely on your use case. There are only really a few specific games and titles that are only playable on Windows. And if those are big enough draws for you, I think you should just go ahead and replace SteamOS with Windows entirely. Call of Duty is one of those things that can only be played on Windows, and while obviously I don't think it can be played competitively on the Steam Deck, things like Black Ops 4 Zombies, Cold War Zombies, and Modern Warfare 3 Zombies are all viable options that you can't have on any other operating system. Also, like I mentioned earlier when talking about Fallout 4, the amount of modding utilities and tools that people have released on Windows might be a draw for you if you're someone who really loves Fallout or other games that are heavily modded. I also mentioned Minecraft Bedrock, but of course Minecraft Java runs natively too, and with one or two fabric mods, meaning they run client-side and they're entirely safe to run on any server, you can run Minecraft Minecraft Java with a controller, which of course there is ways to do that on SteamOS, but again, it's a little more clunky. And that being said, my justification for entirely replacing Windows or SteamOS is I think they are not complementary. I think they're really alternatives to each other. I think dual booting is a really complicated and not necessary process 
that kind of pushes your storage options to really the absolute limit that they can handle. And with Windows updates and all these little tweaks and things, it makes things really, really difficult to deal with, especially when updates come around that might break things, or one day you might have to try to upgrade your operating system or whatever might happen. And realistically, SteamOS can do just about everything Windows can do when it comes to gaming, and Windows can do just about everything SteamOS can do when it comes to gaming. Except Windows has a little bit more of a clunky interface, but can actually do more and pretend to be a computer better. And SteamOS is just, it feels like you're running a console. If it feels really like you're running a jailbroken console. This is what a jailbroken OLED switch looks like. Because you have the option to just pick it up and play and have really no problems, but if you have to solve a problem manually, you can do it yourself with various scripts and tools and tutorials on the internet. But if you're like me and you just want to play single player games that are all available on Steam, SteamOS works just fine. In fact, it runs amazing and it has better performance than Windows, better reliability than Windows, and it's just overall less of a pain. So I would say if you're leaning towards SteamOS or you're just indifferent in the matter, don't download Windows, even though it's a lot better than it used to be, and it's definitely a good experience. I just don't think it justifies dual booting or going through the process of actually setting it up just for really no benefit except for in one or two niche specific cases. All right, I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. If you guys wanna see anything that I mentioned in this video expanded into a full video idea or a full video topic, just go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to do that. Remember to like and subscribe. I think I wanna to try to make it to 300 subscribers at the end of this month. It's a lofty goal, but I think we can hit it. And uh, thank you guys for watching.